Hi, this is Josh. I'm a pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. We're going to cover the medication gabapentin. We're going to talk about the uses of gabapentin, uh, the dosage, the side effects, and uh, potential drug interactions. So topics covered, what is gabapentin, the uses of gabapentin, dosage, side effects, warnings, drug interactions, and potential withdrawal from the medication gabapentin. First off, uh, all this information is for inf informational purposes only. It's not intended to serve as a substitute for the consultation, diagnosis, and or medical treatment of a qualified physician or healthcare provider. Um, so what is gabapentin? It's technically an anticonvulsant, uh, you know, used to treat seizures or something called a GABA analog. The exact mechanism is unknown. It does appear, however, to reduce the release of excitatory neurotransmitters. So what, what does all that mean? Well, what I usually tell people, it's a seizure medicine that's used to treat pain because it seems to have a calming effect on the nerves. And that's, that's basically what happens. It's um, the reduction in the excitatory neurons seems to um, calm pain or especially pain related to so what are some of the approved uses for gabapentin? It's approved for residual nerve pain after things like shingles, um, that the infection shingles, the viral infection, um, there can be some residual nerve pain. It is approved to treat that. It's also, of course, approved for seizures, although in my experience, it's rarely used for that anymore. So off-label, that means this is not what it was originally studied for, but over time we have found that uh, it does help with these things. Um, those things include alcohol dependence and withdrawal, chronic itching, itchy, just uh, unknown itchiness that just doesn't seem to stop, chronic cough, diabetic neuropathy, so nerve damage from diabetes, from years and years of high blood sugar damaging the nerves, fibromyalgia, um, other off-label uses of gabapentin include hiccups, hot flashes, um, neuropathic pain, post-operative pain, restless leg syndrome, and anxiety. So it's a wide range of uses for this medication. What is the dosage? The dosage, um, generally a ceiling dose of 1,800 to 3,600 milligrams. Although it does seem the maximum benefit for most people probably at that 1800 milligrams um, anything beyond that often increases the risk of side effects for some of course that will be a conversation you and your provider will have but typically that's where we see that it's started on a taper generally you start at 300 milligrams bedtime on day one you take it twice a day on day two and then three times a day on the third day and it can of course be increased up to that 1800 milligrams per day sometimes we do see elderly and those uh, maybe more sensitive to medicine started out at 100 milligrams per day um, just some more with the dosage it should be avoid taking the medication with antacids things like tums those chewable antacids um, they just reduce the absorption so we just want to space that out by a couple hours that does uh, antacids that does not mean things like omeprazole or those proton pump inhibitors those acid reducers that is a different thing the immediate release which is by far the most common um, form of gabapentin used can be taken with or without food and it is generally divided uh, three times a day um, so split that dose up about, you know, about every eight hours or so. There is an extended release form of this medication. In my experience, I've not seen it used a lot, so I don't have a lot of experience. It's typically a lot more expensive, and we see coverage on insurance pretty spotty. But it's uh, once a day in the evening. Of course, the extended release tablets, we don't want to split those up, and it should be taken with food. What are the most common side effects? Well, dizziness, drowsiness, ataxia, and fatigue. These, these are the limiting um, side effects that some people simply cannot take this medication because of the drowsiness, uh, they just can't overcome that. That's why we start the dose slowly. Generally, after a couple days, many people, their that dizzy, drowsiness improves, the dizziness improves. Ataxia, that's 
um, where you almost feel like um, intoxicated or drunk when you have the medicine. I've had people tell me about that. They simply can't take it because they feel like that all day, that you can't drive, you can't function properly, and fatigue. But majority of people, uh, this improves over the first week or so, and they're able to tolerate the medication after that. Uh, other side effects, we're talking less than one in 10 experiences. We can get some blurred vision, diarrhea. Changes in behavior does seem like maybe more in pediatrics that occurs, but we always want to keep be mindful of that. Edema, so swelling um, in your arms or legs can occur. Nausea, vomiting, dry mouth, and weight gain all have been reported. Again, you know, less than one in 10, so these are not super common. Uh, other side effects, again, in the uh, less than 10% category, we're talking headache, vertigo, so that dizziness, impotence can occur about 2%, rash uh, can occur, tremor, and cough. Um, not These don't happen a lot, but again, uh, they can occur. Some of the warnings, we want to uh, be aware of rare suicidal behavior, extremely rare but always we should be mindful if we're feeling like there's been a change in our behavior uh, in the wrong direction. We want to speak with our health care provider um, immediately. And other changes in behavior can occur. Withdrawal seizures. Since we don't see this used for seizure control very often anymore, this really isn't an issue if you're using it for pain. Um, and drug-drug interactions. We want to be cautious about um, other medications that we're taking with us. Uh, some of the things we need to consider for the drug-drug interactions, um, we want to be ca careful with any other medications that we take that may cause drowsiness. We want to be certain that our pharmacy, our healthcare providers, they all have our current medication list so they can screen for interactions and uh, catch something uh, before it becomes an issue. It is best avoided with you know, those uh, narcotics, hydrocodone, oxycodone, doesn't mean they're not used together, but they should be used with extreme caution, and we want to watch out on the dosing. Um, high doses of both really could increase your risk of having some problems. It's best avoided with Zolpidem, or that's generic Ambien. Those other sedatives for sleep need to be real cautious with that. A lot of times people can take their evening dose of, Zol of uh, gabapentin you know, close to bedtime, and they find that that helps with their sleep. Again, a conversation you'd want to have with your healthcare provider. And it really is best to avoid alcohol with this medication. Uh, withdrawal can occur. So it is recommended you do not stop abruptly. This, of course, is dose dependent. If you're only taking 300 milligrams at bedtime, well, that usually can just be stopped. Um, if you're up to that 1,800 milligrams or even beyond that, then it should be tapered generally over one to two weeks. Um, you can talk to your healthcare provider, your pharmacist about a, a tapering dose for you, but uh, it, typically you want to go down off the medication slowly. I do appreciate you watching my video. I hope you found this information useful. Um, I would appreciate it if you'd like in this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have questions, go ahead and ask in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them for you. Thanks again for watching.